Shane Moore, and this is the Texas Live, and uh, I'm very happy to be back after um, a lot of uh, health problems and finally um, making it now and feeling much better. So um, I'm just very excited to be back with, uh, trust me, I've had enough downtime to, um, to really um, learn and research and re-research so many things. And uh, it's just, um, it's, um, I wouldn't say that it was a blessing per se, I mean, but, um, I guess it, uh, you know, that's one thing that I can count as a positive from it that um, I did was um, had plenty of time to um, research things and study things that um, I normally wouldn't have time to do. And what we're going to be talking about tonight is something that um, that I started thinking about about two months ago um, is the dark part of ourselves, of our psyche, our mind, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, and how that that we have a we have what we label as a as the good part and then we have the bad part we have the light we have the darkness and but the darkness the dark part, the dark, what Carl Jung called the shadow, is so. It's it's so. Um, let me find find the correct word. Fascinating. Also um, creepy. Because our conscious mind doesn't even know what the shadow, which is um, what Jung called, referred to the unconscious as, what it's hiding from us, literally hiding from us it's not hiding everything but it's uh, there's there's things that 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 it represses things that it um, covers uh, hides whatever we we will get into it and it's it is a journey into the unknown and um, just unbelievable if it wasn't true and um, one one thing that I want to read you is a quote from Carl Jung uh, the Swiss psychiatrist um, psychologist that uh, was was the founder of analytical psychology he says quote until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. End of quote. Now, I'm going to take a short break, but when I come back, I'll explain, at least I'll give my opinion on what he's saying, and it is profound. It is it's absolutely profound and um, 
we will we will get into it the our undiscovered self the how we project our shadow our uh, dark self without even realizing it and what the solution is because this shadow this is largely negative and it's um, it's comprised of the things that we don't like about ourselves it's comprised of of things that we fear things that we find uh, disgusting and um, unlikable we will get into that much much more and uh, yes mama she says the volume needs to be turned up sorry about that um, I will turn it up and um, when I come back so I will be back in three minutes so hang tight and we'll have a great night yeah 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 feel the music the rhythm a heart on a mission can't fight the feeling and i'm not denying it no i'm here to lose a control Emotions, yeah, yeah. emotion, they all wanna go dance, sweat yeah, in yeah. an ocean, and I'm not denying it. No, yeah, yeah. I'm here to lose all control. Yeah, yeah. First time.
And I am back. Mona, how is the sound now? And there's a delay, so um, so I'll just continue talking until she gives me a sound check. So, but um, I want to apologize for being late. Um, Mona and I, we we um, have chickens, and we were. Um, we had to um, go out and make sure that the chickens were in the coop because it was beginning to lightly rain. We get out there, and I kid you not, the biggest storm since Noah's flood. I mean, with hail, and it is, the wind is like, 50 60 mile an hour gust we are we're both we can't see and um, be, because the rain and the hail are actually hitting us in the head and our eyeballs and we are soaked I mean literally soaked um, just unbelievable and how as soon as we went out, boom, it just hits, and it was like it was like Niagara Falls with hail, and um, you know winds that um, that were and they were just throwing us around. I mean, you, Mona can you know vouch for that. I mean, it was it was insane, and. As soon as we got back in the house to uh, to dry off and um, make sure that we still had our eyes and no holes in our head, um, it stopped. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is personal. I don't know, but um, Mom says that says it says that the sound is still a little. Um, also, let me just um, let me adjust the sound, and we will get started. So, okay, how's that? Okay. All right. Um, like I said, two months ago, I you know started thinking about how that we we all have um, these certain things that um, that we um, the, the dark side that we struggle to keep hidden uh, you know we don't there's there's just certain things that that you hold deep within and you don't share with anybody. Okay. Well, the problem is, is that many people, most people, if not all people, um, they, they actually suffer from guilt, shame, um, which guilt and shame lead to many other things and it's like the where the mind goes the body follows so so if you're depressed anxious it's going to going to you know come out um in um one way or another so what affects your mind affects your body and um, let's see, Mona, you say, I'm sure I'm headset on it would be better. Okay, if if there's anybody else that, um, let's see, we've got eight people listening. Um, if if somebody would um, just join the chat, just let me know about the sound, I would appreciate it. Um, like I said, we just had a horrible storm, 
and uh, it might have thrown things off. Um, I'm not sure, but um, anyway, uh, I'll just continue and we'll just take it from there. So, but um, but the what happens is is um, we we are taught from birth uh, or very small children that if you try hard enough and you um, and you have enough faith and you apply yourself and you focus and you try 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 again you know if you fail you try again um, if you fully apply yourself with enough focus persistence faith and willpower you can overcome anything, right? We've all been told that. And there's nothing wrong with that, with most things. But when you're talking about the shadow, when you're talking about the dark self, it's, it's not true. Because there is no eradicating it there's no destroying it and there's no conquering it the reason is is because it is just as much you as the opposite end of the spectrum of your psyche your mind as the good you when you're shining at your very brightest it's you now consider this or just you know ponder this when and those of you that know me i'm not getting religious i'm not trying to preach to anybody but i find it very very telling that in the bible jesus talks about he says the the thank you Jennifer and welcome she said she can hear me just fine okay and um, yes Mona even the church teaches um, to remove impure thoughts okay and I'm glad that you brought that up because why does the church teach that because it's impossible it's impossible for example I'm going to tell you okay don't think about an elephant standing on a thimble what are you thinking about right now an elephant standing on a thimble so what does that tell you? Rather than than, and I'm not I'm not against any belief system. I'm not against spirituality, but I'm against religion because religion is just what I'm I'm about to explain. And this is this this you know shadow, this dark self that we've been taught from birth is oh you know uh, the devil's in your mind you know and that's that's true to some extent because um, I can I can show you step by step how the devil is you know your ego meism me 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 you know and in in the bible the word satan means adversary okay how do we grow 
how do we grow spiritually? We grow not by our, not by what we, not by our successes. We grow by our failures. You, you never grow on the mountaintop. You always, you always grow in the valley. You never grow in the light. You always grow in the darkness. So the next time when you're going through a very hard time, and I know a lot of people are, I know I have for the past year, um, that's one thing that, that I knew that, that it may, uh, may be extremely painful, and it was for me, and I know that many people experience much more severe pain, but um, this is, that's what got me through it. That's what, um, that's what, you know, kept me in the fight is that I knew that, that the, that no matter how bad it got, no matter how dark it got, or seemingly hopeless, that I was becoming stronger. And I'll tell you now, <laughs> one thing is, one thing I learned is, I can, I don't think that there's any pain now that, that would really affect me because I don't think it could be worse than what I've been through this past year. So, um, that's one thing I learned. My pain tolerance is, um, off the charts. So, but, um. I sure I'm I'm ready to retire that and just be done with it so but I'm doing much better but the church teaches and chastises what do they do they preach hellfire and damnation they preach you were born a sinner and I've always had a problem with that because, okay, if I'm born a sinner, and please, I'm I'm not being I'm not being um, sacrilegious. I mean, I'm not being a smart ass or anything. Um, but I just want to ask the pastor that or the preacher. Um, evangelist whatever that, that yes you were born into sin and um, and you're guilty before God well okay I'm not being disrespectful towards the creator but if I was born sinful my question is, is how is that my fault and not his fault? He created me. So, you know, and I've talked to, I talked to Christians like that. And the reason I say that is because I live in Texas, in deep south, and most of the people are Christians, so they say they are. Um, and there's there's not that many Buddhists or um, it's it's the Bible Belt. So that's that's what I grew up with and um, observed and quickly learned um, that it wasn't what it appeared to be. And it's just this, that the hierarchy, the leadership at the top of the organized religion, 
they know they know the solution to most people's anxiety their fear um, their personality disorders depression but if they were to teach or preach or share that solution that answer they would be removed from the church why well they say they answer to God but they answer to a to a um, how would you call it um, to a denominational board um, that they call the shots you know it's like with the nothing against Southern Baptist but that's what I grew up as um, they have the you know Southern Baptist board uh, you know Southern Baptist Association and um, if if a uh, pastor if he's teaching you know, Sunday school or whatever and wants to teach say you know something that just you know comes upon him and he just wants to teach it it's it's frowned upon because that's not the plan whose plan their plan and I just find that very very uh, you know that's that's people it's not God it's not the creator and oh that's a whole other story but um, but yes they know that people can be manipulated and people can can be controlled by casting fear of what of eternal damnation in a fiery hell which you will never escape and you'll never die but you'll fry forever oh and by the way God loves you unconditionally yeah, whoa um, my head's spinning because unconditionally okay I mean I I get that but what I don't get is is um, you say unconditionally but there's a condition that if if you don't accept certain things and you know what I'm talking about if you don't accept his um, and I'm not I'm just I'm just laying it out here okay if you want to hate me that's fine but I wouldn't I wouldn't put my neck out like this if I truly didn't want you to know the truth please those of you that listen to um, Jolie Osteen I mean Joel Osteen um, and his husband Victoria I mean um, his wife Victoria <laughs> Um, and Kenneth Copeland, all these people, you know. Um, they, well, Joel and Kenneth really doesn't preach anything but prosperity and profit, you know, making money. But those that preach the hellfire and damnation, they preach that because they know that, number one, that's the worst case scenario that even when you physically die, you don't escape it, you know. And it's a mind game. It's mind control. And we have, we have our parents, we have our grandparents, that they were taught, they were taught that. And when I say taught, I really mean they were indoctrinated. They were unknowingly 
indoctrinated to believe something that is not true. Now, the Bible, the Bible is, is, not, is not a history book, okay? You don't see where it says Holy Bible history book or, you know, um, that, you know, these, these are the, you know, specific times and that this happened. And, and in many cases, it doesn't even give a time. Why? Well, because most of it never actually happened. It's metaphorical and allegorical and symbolic language that is conveying to us a very real spiritual truth, truths, <laughs> plural, that otherwise could not be conveyed. It's just too, it's, um, it's on a totally different level. So what, what had happened was they had, the writers had to, had, had to write what? Parables. What did Jesus say in the Bible? He says, he told his disciples, he says, I speak to you in parables. What are parables? Um, they're stories that illustrate certain points, um, facts, truths. Um, but that's, that's all, all they are, fictional stories that never real, truly happened. And even the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 he says um, for the letter kills but the spirit gives life and what he's saying is is the letter kills he says he's saying if you read this word for word and you take it literally you are going to physically die never knowing the truth never never knowing the power that 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 the that this holds because if if you you have to admit if you take it literally it sounds like a fairy tale and i remember back when i was i was very young and very gullible and uh, you know, people would say, man, that sounds like a fairy tale. I would, well, no, and I would try to explain how, you know, certain things that is just completely impossible. There's just no way. Such as Samson in the book of Judges um, takes, it says he takes 300 foxes and ties their tails together in threes and puts a torch in the middle of their tails, sets the torches on fire and sends them running through the um, crops, through the fields of the Philistines to destroy their crops. And I'm trying to tell someone way back when how that's possible. Oh, that's, that's sad, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, no way that could have happened. And, but, it is, it's talking about something else completely, not even remotely, about foxes or torches of fire or whatever. And um, just like when, you know, Jesus said, if someone strikes you on the cheek, 
turned him the other also. It does not mean what people think it, what most people think it means. You know, well, yeah, you know, if somebody hits you, you don't hit them back. You you turn turn the other cheek. That that is that's not what that means. That's not what that means. And there's a YouTube video of a pastor that did a called a called a volunteer up or something, and um, was going to illustrate. And I don't remember what happened, but I think he called the wrong volunteer because the pastor got slapped so hard. I don't, I don't think he had a chance to turn the other cheek. And that's what I'm talking about is truthfully, if, you know, back in the time of Jesus, you know, I'm telling you, if someone had a slap Jesus, okay, they would have um, made a big mistake because it wouldn't be him literally turning the other cheek. It would be probably them on the ground. Okay, but anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But Mona, you say church politics are the worst because that's the place where you least expect it to happen, but it does all the time. That's right. And I find it very telling also that the church and the state um, in the Bible they're the ones who were you know responsible working together to execute Jesus right but why because he was speaking the truth he was telling people, look, you don't need these religious leaders. You don't need these Pharisees. You don't need these theologians. You don't need these uh, spiritual professors. You don't need a middleman. You don't need someone to, to tell you what they've, what their friend experienced or what somebody else experienced and very rarely what they experienced when you can experience it for yourself now how many people go to church because they're depressed they're down the dark self is is really um is really causing them a lot of misery. You know, the guilt, you know, oh man, I'm thinking these thoughts, I'm thinking these horrible thoughts, I'm thinking these lustful thoughts, I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking of um, hurting someone or maybe even murdering someone. Oh God, the devil's after me, you know. No, it's, um, it's actually, uh, there's a term for that. It's called normal. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, yeah, it's normal. There's nothing wrong with you. It's it's just it's just proof that you're a card carrying member of the human race. But the most churches, what do they do? that the pastor, he's usually dressed very nice. He is standing above everybody else, you know, for, so everybody can hear him, you know, acoustic reasons, uh, which is very strange because now we have speakers and um, headphones and so, but yeah, the reason he's above everybody else is because it is, plays on, your subconscious mind he's exalted he's he's higher than everybody he's on a different level when he's really not what what many and I'm not talking about all there are some some true spiritual some good guys out there that are teaching truth but not many um, 
and I'm just being honest, but what most preach as from God or they, you know, I have a word from the Lord, they're only regurgitating what's been regurgitated what's been regurgitated to them at seminary or Bible college or from the theologians and it was it's just uh, it's just passed down same thing I talk to many people and they talk about how how they're depressed they're anxious they're worried they cry all the time. It's it's just really sad. I mean, it really is. And they say, you know, um, but God is my strength. And God is my fortress. God is my high tower. Okay, well, that sounds good. It sounds good. I mean, it does. But, you know, not being sarcastic or anything, but... You say God is your power. Well, where is that power? Because when you tell me that that you spend most of the day in bed crying um, and you don't have any motivation to do anything and you're having thoughts of suicide, okay, but God, God is your power, right? That's, that's not power. Okay, what happens is, is people are, are taught that, that if, if they have certain thoughts, if they have certain desires, if, if they um, have anger issues, um, even if, if they're fearful that it's a sin, that it's a lack of faith, that it's, you know, this or that. It's always something that you're lacking. Now think about that. It's always something that you're lacking. And you need God's power to overcome that, right? Where do you, where do you get God's power? according to the church at church you know well if you if you come to church on a regular basis I mean they might not come out and say it but it's pretty you know it's pretty obvious what what the message is well if you're faithful to God God will bless you and just like you know Kenneth Copeland and so many others you know they teach um, if if you sow sow a seed to God, He will return that in a blessing sevenfold, you know, a hundredfold. Now it's like a thousandfold or whatever. How many times does that happen? How about never? You know, just just saying. But what happens is, you know, people, they're, they're convinced that they're evil or that they're lacking something or that they're not good enough or that um, there's something wrong with them, that, that um, it, it makes them feel outcast, it makes them feel different, black sheep, whatever, and... Um, it they project their own rejection. Why? Because they're rejecting themselves, believing this. Now I know that's 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 kind of tricky. It's kind of deep, but it's the truth. Because what what the dark self does is what Jung called um, shadow projection. And what shadow projection is, is, um, let me, that, 
that um, fall that you heard <laughs> was my iPad, so let me, oh, there it is, okay. What that is, is it is when your unconscious mind or that part of your unconscious mind, it takes and, let me see, because I'm, I want to, want to make sure that I give Young's um, description of it. Okay. According to Young, the shadow in being instinctive and irrational is prone to psychological projection in which a perceived personal inferiority is recognized as a perceived moral deficiency in someone else because the the dark self which or 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 the shadow it um there's a lot of a lot of pride there a lot of ego like i said if you, if you really want to know the identity of the devil, Satan, whatever, the one that's going to give you all the adversity in your life and then some, you only have to look within to your ego. That's it. That is, that is the... In my opinion, that is the shadow. That is the that's the darkness. That's the that's the me. Me, 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 meism. And we all have it in one way or another. I mean, from the from the best people um, that I've ever known and um, the most honest they even admitted it, you know. They said, hey, it's the truth. And uh, there was um, my great friend when I, I was in my early 20s, um, was, was my pastor at this, you know, Southern Baptist Church and was probably the most, you know, spiritual man that I've ever met in my life. And he was just... He, he could walk into a room um, wearing jeans and sneakers and um, sometimes look, look like a homeless person because he had been, you know, working on a car or, or plumbing, you know, helping someone, working on their house or whatever, helping them, actually helping them, not, not taking from them. And... Every time that he would, you know, walk into to, to, to a room or walk into a building, wherever a gathering was or whatever, within minutes, he would be surrounded by everyone from, from children to adults, men, women, uh, doctors, lawyers. I mean, they were just drawn to him. And he was, was as, as um, he was rough around the edges, and but but the main thing that that was his that was his power, the power that he had, the power that he didn't even have to say anything, he didn't have to tell you about it, you just felt it, you literally felt it when you were around him is 
he knew himself. He knew who he was. Okay? In, in, um, at the Oracle of Delphi, I'm sure my, uh, most of you have, have heard of the Oracle of Delphi, how this prophetess would sit on a tripod inside this cave in, um, in Greece, Macedonia. Um, it was some, some say um, Arcadia, but that's a, that's a whole other story, a whole other term. But anyway, there was this cave. She sat inside the cave where there were methane fumes that were coming up, which would obviously get her um, altered, her consciousness altered. Uh, well, let's just, you know, she would get high <laughs> and she would just rattle things, you know. So, but there were people that would come from, you know, thousands of miles away, walking um, by horseback, by camel, whatever. They would line up to enter the cave to ask her one question and hear the answer. Here's a solution. And this is so important, just, just, amazing fascinating and it's it would be funny if it wasn't so sad that above this cave was engraved know thyself know thyself and every person that walked into that cave saw that inscription, never realizing that that was the answer to their question, to whatever question they had, it didn't matter. Know thyself. That was it. The woman that was on the tripod altered consciousness because of the methane fumes she was she was probably like um, what what do you call it um, Long Island medium you know hey it's hit and miss you know <laughs> I mean and back in those days no cameras no 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 recorders nothing hey you really missed this one you know no so but there was a reason why that that was that was engraved above the cave is because that's the answer to every question. Because if you don't know yourself, you cannot know anyone else. And knowing yourself, you know, it's it sounds sounds very strange and weird, but know thyself actually in my opinion and many others also believe knowing thyself is knowing the dark self not attempting to eradicate it not attempting to destroy it not attempting to overcome it but get this embracing it embracing it accepting it not not you know saying that it's right but then we get into what is right what is wrong what's good what's evil because what's good to one person may be evil to another so it's relative now I do agree that um, 
things like pedophilia and murder. That's wrong. I mean, come on. Yeah. But for the most part, um, so-called um, bad thoughts or um, unruly emotions or um, you're struggling with certain desires and the first thing is is okay um, you you need to really really do what apply yourself more you need to focus more and I remember being told that when I was like in in deep depression deep anxiety and I'm thinking you know this person they may may need dentures by the end of the day because oh it's like wow <laughs> I I just can't believe how brilliant you are because I would have never thought of you know focusing more and applying myself more that that would be the answer thank you so much Mr. Idiot please get out of my sight you know it's like people don't want to hear that but they're not telling you from personal experience they're telling you that because that's what they've been told. And psychiatrist, personally, if I had a psychiatrist, I would want a psychiatrist that had been there and done that and overcome it versus one who learned about it from a book or learned about it from someone else. Unless they've been through the fire, now I may I may go to them, not for them to treat me, but so I can treat them because I've been there, and many of you have too. And just just because they have the degree and you know they're you know very. Uh, highly esteemed and but it's just it's just what they've learned it's just book knowledge many have never never actually experienced the um, darkness of depression or a panic attack or severe anxiety or any disorders at all so yeah, give me somebody that's been through it and has overcome it, and then we'll talk. But, um, but that's the know thyself is you, your conscious, your conscious mind that's listening to me right now. Quote unquote, the light. Why is that? Because you're conscious of it. The darkness is the unconscious that, that you're not aware of, that I'm not aware of. None of us are aware of the unconscious. So you have the light and the darkness. You have the spectrum and both are at opposing ends. And there you have the duality, the division, and the Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Well, without the darkness, there would actually be no light, right? Because where does, where does light shine? Well, it, uh, light doesn't shine in light. Light shines in the darkness. The Bible says that. And the darkness cannot overcome it. So, and the next time that you're in darkness, just, just remember this. 
in the darkness you have a clear view of the light and that's that's another thing that I've I I have applied this past year is in the darkness you have a clearer view of the light and that is the truth and um but but that's uh Simone you say if you don't know yourself you can easily be led astray that's right and there's so many people who who have been taught that that from from an early age you know well if you do this if you do that if you say this if you say that if you believe this if you believe that you're bad 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 you know um that's not good that's not uh, that's not acceptable you know and when 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 you get right down to it well as far as me if it harms no one if it harms no one and someone's not harming themselves then I say <laughs> they're free to do what they want to do who am I to say that's wrong don't 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 do that don't don't believe that you know um, your your knowledge or whatever is um, is is wrong what you believe is wrong who am I to say that and um, I I'm a a licensed minister started out with in in the Southern Baptist Church but I quickly I went non-denominational um, quote unquote not religious but spiritual and um, many people that that you know talk to me you know for the first time they're they're expecting some um, some choir boy or uh, very proper and what they there's they're surprised that um that um, I'm just a, I'm a Texas cowboy and rough around the edges, and I tell it like it is. And um, if it rubs your fur the wrong way, turn the cat around. You know, um, don't be offended. You know, you, you can believe it or you can you cannot believe it it's not going to hurt my feelings it's not going to make me think any less of you um but yeah they're um well case in point this is how this is how indoctrinated we are there there was a minister who went to a church and um went to another church to uh, preach and um, he did an, an experiment um, got up at the pulpit and said um, said there are um, there are over um, something like 70,000 children that go to bed hungry every night in in the US or maybe it was the world I'm not sure but um, he says they 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 go to bed hungry he says and they wake up and they go to school mainly because at school they get breakfast and they get lunch and he said now isn't that some shit and everybody just freezes. And he continues talking. He doesn't, he never breaks, you know, never breaks his, you know, he just deadpan like nothing ever happened, you know. And after, after about, you know, 10 minutes, he says, yes, he says 70,000 or maybe it was even more than that. He says, that is 
incredible. He said, but what is even more incredible is that for the last 10 minutes, you've not been thinking about the starving, hungry, hungry children. You've been thinking about me saying shit. You see how how that's that's been taught we've we've been indoctrinated that that's bad that's that's oof, that's really really bad when it's it's nothing more to divert your attention away from what's really bad case in point the hundreds hundreds of thousands or whatever of children that go to bed hungry every night and wake up and can't wait to go to school to eat that's bad an adult speaking to adults saying isn't that some shit that's not bad but hey you know that's what, that's what we've been indoctrinated to believe is that it's bad and um so that's just one example and many times myself included i mean you know many people myself included there's small things like that 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 you know people they may say they may do something and it's really not bad but we've been taught that it's bad and subconsciously it makes us judge them it makes us see them as bad when they're really not or they really may not be i mean who who knows but what i'm saying is is that just because someone um is rough around the edges and um you know um uh, you know, sailors have to tell them to watch their language does not mean they're a bad person. I mean, um, it's, that's just the, the, um, it's just the mind control. And when I say mind control, talking to different groups and everything, most people are like, oh, here we go, you know mind control oh this guy <sighs> conspiracy theorist no it's conspiracy fact it is mind control and it's it's very subtle well it's very subtle and very effective when someone is very skilled and very educated and knows how to deliver it. And how is it delivered? Speech, talking. If someone, say, um, knows neuro-linguistic programming, which is a very real thing. Look it up. NLP. Look it up. NLP. Neuro-linguistic programming. That the person says phrases that are designed in such a way that you that they're saying something that you know people hear they may be talking to you they may be talking to somebody else or me and what we hear is not what other people hear it's kind of like the parables Jesus said I speak to you in parables he says so those hearing won't understand you know and um, 
Jesus was, you know, talking about that because they weren't ready for it. They weren't ready for that, um, for that level of of uh, truth. I mean, there's there's times when when you know people th- their support system may be complete lies, may be complete falsehoods, may be built on a house of cards. But the worst thing you can do is to go in and just, you know, pull the house down with um, massive truth and then that person or or you know, people they're thinking, oh man, my entire life I've what what have I been doing, you know? I thought it was kind of something else. And many people say the truth will set you free. And I love it when they say that because I say no, it won't. <laughs> and they're like, excuse me? No, it won't. The truth you know and understand will set you free. But if you don't know it and you don't understand it, how is it going to set you free? It's not. Why do people say, truth will set you free because of that very reason right it won't unless you know it and you understand it and how how many churches you know how many people well if you just confess with your mouth and if you say this certain prayer and you ask for forgiveness you will be saved and your life will be changed forever and you'll never be the same and they leave and they're never the same because they're worse and you know it's true some of you have experienced it yourself I know I did go to church because I, I, I was sad, I was depressed, I was confused, and left thinking, what the hell was that? I mean, whoa! You know, it's like, I, I went there to feel better, and now, now I, you know, I feel like I've, I've been beat down like a rented mule, you know? It's, it's like, how does that help anyone? And then people say, I know that, that I'm not worthy of God's love. Or I know I'm not worthy of being loved. Or, no, let me tell you, everyone deserves to be loved everyone deserves to be respected and when when uh, you people say that I know I'm not worthy of God's love say pull yeah okay well in that case um, well Jesus died in vain didn't he because uh, doesn't it say that you know that 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 he made you worthy? Did you miss that somehow? I mean, I'm just you know wondering uh, because it's they they're saying that for many times I believe for attention, which is another part of the dark self, attention seeking. Um, using subtle well that was a very you know that was pretty obvious you know um, on 
I'm 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 the lowest of the low and but some some are actually telling the truth. They're being pretty honest, you know, it's like so and I always appreciate honesty. But um yeah. So but this um this projection is is um Young says if these projections remain hidden, says, then the shadow has a free hand and can realize its object, if it has one, or bring about some other situation characteristic of its power. These projections insulate and harm individuals by acting as a constantly thickening veil of illusion between the ego and the real world. Have you ever felt that? Have you ever been there? Yeah. Where you start doubting yourself. And you, am I going crazy? Am I losing it? A person that knows themselves, if you know yourself, you're not going to ask yourself that. You're going to know it. And you're going to call it. You're going to recognize what's going on. That you're being manipulated, or some someone is is attempting to manipulate you. And as strange as it is, even if it's your own mind, there's that duality: the positive, the negative. The conscious, the unconscious, the conscious, the subconscious, whatever you want to call it. What's a battery? Positive pole, negative pole. What happens when you connect the two? Bam! Power. Male, female. What happens when you connect the two? Bam! Power. Life. Creation. Right? The male and female, the masculine and the feminine. And whether you are a man or a woman, you have both spiritually. Spiritually, you are, you have the masculine and you have the feminine. Women. You have the masculine, you have the feminine. That's the, that's what the description in the Bible of Solomon's Temple, the two pillars, the um, two columns, uh, you know, pillars outside Solomon's Temple that never existed, and I'll tell you why, but they one was named Boaz, one was named Yakin, meaning severity and beauty, I believe, or severity and mildness. The masculine, the feminine, the father, the mother, and then there was a quote unquote third pillar but it was invisible that's the son that's that's the that's the offspring of the positive and negative and not that women are negative negative I mean I'm, I'm just you know, saying opposite and not that men are always positive <laughs> It's just when you connect the two, the two opposing forces. What happens? Well, they don't cancel each other out, do they? No, creation happens. Think about that. Life. Creation. Creating a life. That's... Um, that's an amazing thing. Um, 
But let me go on with this. Um, these projections insulate and harm individuals by acting as a constantly thickening veil of illusion between the ego and the real world. Um, it's it's like um, like this um, rapper, some guy that that was making fun of of um, this um, you know, fellow rapper. Trust me, I, I I don't know my rappers, okay, but um, but he he was on Twitter or something, and one man's son is transgender, uh, you know whatever, and um, this man was just you know putting this he's twelve or thirteen putting his 12 or 13 year old down I mean talking really really bad you know about you know using all the derogatory language and everything and all the names and stuff you know and well the guy that that you know did it you know um, publicly trying to humiliate this 12 13 year old boy for being transgender well, he was invited to the Mike Tyson podcast, <laughs> and I loved it. Mike Tyson says, so, um, what you said about, um, and, and I don't even know his name, you know, he says, what you said about his, his son, his transgender son, he says, why did you say that? And the dude looks like he is going to die. And Mike Tyson says, is it because you have, um, you have tendencies like that? He says, is it because you may be gay? He says, go ahead and tell me, you know? And he puts this guy in his place. I mean, like nobody's business. And he says, you know, it is not okay. It's not cool to to humiliate and berate anyone, especially a child. And um, Tyson just really, you know, I mean, I mean, I loved it because everyone deserves respect. And appreciation and well love not for what they can do not not because of their status not because of their bank account not because of any talent they deserve it simply because they are they're a human being and that's why I hate labels, which is another another thing that um, another tactic that that the that's passed into the unconscious mind is labels. You know, you start labeling people, whether it be. Republican, Democrats. Um, you have straight. You have bisexuals. You have gays. You have transgender. You have white. You have black. You have brown. You have yellow. You have red. Um, and I'm coming to to the point when Mona and I were dating we were at this um, club this um, was a VFW club and it was mainly bikers well I go in wearing my black Stetson and, and I've got on my boots and everything and I don't think anything about it 
And so next thing you know, there's all these bikers around me. And this guy says, um, says, um, so, um, so you're, you're a cowboy. And I said, well, no, you know, because I knew where, where, where this was going, you know? And, uh, he says, well, when you saw me, he says, you saw a biker, you knew I was a biker. And I said, no, no, that's not what I saw. And he said, what did you see? And I said, I saw a human being. That's what I saw. Didn't see a biker. I saw a human being. Am I a cowboy? No. Do I? Do I wear, um, you know, a hat and boots and jeans? Yes. But that that doesn't change the fact that I'm a human being. And his his leather jacket and chaps and yeah. Yeah, I mean, he he bikes, you know, hey, but human being. And and if people would get away from this from from these labels, it is it's nothing more than indoctrination to divide and it's 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 insane. Now, I'm not saying that that you know there's not bad things that that happen but and and I'll close with this the the dark self that part of our mind that um that we don't even know what it's up to and proof of that is is I know I've had times, and I'm sure you have too, where you've been sitting, minding your own business, you're not thinking about anything in the world, you're completely at peace, and for some reason, out of the blue, you either get really, really scared, really, really nervous, or you get really, really mad, and you have no idea why. That is what Carl Jung is talking about. That is what, that's the dark self. That's the shadow. It's working where? It's working in the darkness. It's working hidden. And um, what, what happens, what, what must happen for that for the problem to be solved once and for all is is not attempting to destroy it overcome it um, control it because it it cannot be controlled it just can't it can't be destroyed it would be destroying yourself. Can't get rid of it because it's you. And Carl Jung said it the best. He says, quote, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. And that's profound. And Carl Jung is also the one who coined the, the uh, term synchronicity, which is what happened two months ago when I started thinking about the duality that we have in our mind. Um, it's like opposing, opposing um, opposite ends of the spectrum of our mind, our psyche that um, that are completely um, extreme opposites of each other 
And I'm thinking, okay, well, it's like the right brain, left brain. Right brain is like freedom. Let's party. Let's paint. Let's get creative. Left brain is no, I'm going to stay here and monitor the hall. Pretty sure there's going to be somebody running and I'm going to get them, you know. I'm going to keep a list of everyone that breaks the rules. And so so you have these 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 two opposing uh these these two opposites and each the right brain believes that it's the whole and the left brain believes it's the whole so there's there's you know there's there's no question of of why there would not be confusion or why that um sometimes we experience um seemingly random fear or random anger or whatever and i believe that it's because of that not just because of the duality of our mind but our actual physical brain as well as the spiritual like i said the masculine the feminine the positive the negative um and and that goes much much deeper much much deeper and many people they 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 don't know but it's hidden in plain sight that that message of the masculine and the feminine they're always together it's in advertising it is in your face everywhere and when when you see it and I, I will do a uh, you know video podcast where I can show you show you exactly how it's in your face and how they use the symbolism. You will see it everywhere, and that tells you how powerful it is that that masculine and feminine not apart but together together as one and that's what has to happen with this dark self one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light but by making the darkness conscious now light is a metaphor for knowledge um, the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and God said let there be light and there was light and you know many people they say oh I would have loved to have been there I bet the light was just glorious just you know um, just the the first sunlight you know hitting and I'm like well yeah well that's a problem because um, the Bible says the sun plants and everything weren't created till like uh, like the fifth or sixth day I mean so yeah how do you explain that um, well I'm glad you asked because it's not literal light actually that word light in Genesis chapter 1 in Hebrew can mean and sometimes means data literally data information knowledge now you take that and and it says and darkness hovered over the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light light where light in the darkness well if if light is knowledge what is darkness lack of knowledge
ignorance. And that's not, I'm not being, uh, you know, derogatory saying that. I mean, it's actually lacking knowledge. So if you read it knowing that, that's, that's telling you the truth. God said, the creator, whatever you want to call it, the source, let there be knowledge where there's now ignorance. And <laughs> the way things have, have, have been going this year, I think um, I think we need another um, let there be light <laughs> even more so um, man it has been a wild ride but um, but it's Carl Young is saying and I agree with him I have said this before is is that when when you are when you are dealing with that part of of the mind which which I have often called um, the rogue you know like you know, part of the mind that may have fractured maybe have you know, split off because of abuse or um, trauma and then you get into altars or whatever but that just shows you the power of the mind but it's like this part or you know sometimes altars or which is part of the dark self I believe I believe they go rogue they're like hey I don't need this host anymore because it's it's not common but it but it has been recorded it has actually been documented that there have been altars created that were that were created with such detail and such precision and don't ask me how but given such personality that they I, I don't even know how to explain it but I just call it going rogue they no longer needed the host they no longer needed that person that you know that was you know so traumatized that they created this personality and um, I think that many times when uh, you people are having mental disorders, sometimes uh, schizophrenia, that could be that could be an ex explanation. I mean, you know, it could be. I mean, I'm not saying it is, but. Um, to me, that does make sense, or it would make sense. Um, but anyway, um, I will continue um, with um, the dark self, but um, in in the next episode, and um, we will talk about uh, the what's called the shadow work. Um, work that you can actually do um, mental exercises per se I mean um, that that you can do to begin integrating with this um, this unknown part of you making the darkness the unconscious conscious um, awakening the sleeper you know remember the movie Dune the sleeper awakens that's what it's talking about 
it's not talking about the um, guy um, being the messiah or whatever in Dune. It's talking about your unconscious coming out from being hidden. The sleeper awakens. Yeah, it's it's sleeping, so to speak, dreaming, and which is, of course, a metaphor. But when someone's sleeping, do you know what they're what they're doing in their dreams? No, that's what your unconscious mind is doing. Is that's that's a metaphor for what your unconscious mind's doing. And you know nothing about it. I know nothing about it. And no one's immune from it. We all are victims of it until the two become one. They merge. They can merge. But what has to happen before they can merge is is the person has to forget and um, leave behind the notion that the evil must be conquered or the bad must be punished or whatever because, again, good and bad are relative What's good to one person may be bad to another. What someone sees as good, another may see as evil. They're just words. Words have... Words... They don't have meaning. They have use. It's the intent behind the words used that that's that has power and so the um, the notion that 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 part of you um, that you just need to stop it it's impossible because it's you it's not some foreign outside force coming in it's you. Jesus said, said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Okay? He says, um, don't you understand? He says, when they say, lo, the kingdom is here, the kingdom is there, he says, believe them not, for the kingdom of heaven is within you. Well, if heaven is within you, then hell would be in you, right? Also, I mean, hell would also be in you, correct? Because it's not talking about a literal... He's not talking about a literal heaven. He's talking about a state of mind. And what happens is... is um, heaven comes down to earth where where is hell located in the, in the bible located in the earth heaven and hell or heaven and earth heaven on earth it's talking about the dark self and you now it's talking about the dark self which is the unconscious and the conscious, you now. The spiritual and the physical. It's all opposites. It's all duality, polarity. And when, when the two meet, it's always power. What is taught in churches, you will receive power. Power, power, power. But how many actually do? 
Think about that. Think about that. How many actually do? Hmm. How many leave powerless, feeling even more powerless? Yeah. Those stats are not good. But anyway, thank you all for listening. I see we've got 19 people listening or in the live chat. Mona, thank you so much for helping with the sound check and everything. We're getting the, getting the rust off and the dust off of everything. Um, but um, if, if you want to um, contact me, uh, you can contact me at the Texas podcast at gmail.com. Um, and if, if you have ideas, um, show ideas or whatever, or maybe you want to share your own experience, um, with, you know, different things. I mean, I'm open to everything. So, uh, paranormal, conspiratorial, um, just, you know, things that are relevant, fascinating, um, just the full spectrum. So, um, and also, um, if, if you're someone needs to, needs, needs to talk or, um, you know, this is, this is with, you know, Thanksgiving coming up and Christmas and, you know, it's hard on a lot of people. Hey, you know, if you're, you know, having a hard time or whatever, and you need someone to talk to, um, I'm here. I mean, just message me again at the Texas podcast at gmail.com. And, um, I, you know, nothing is, is that bad. I mean, it's just, uh, temporary. So, but, uh, for those who aren't, traveling or um, will maybe spending Thanksgiving alone I will have a Thanksgiving podcast and um, I guess we can just discuss anything and everything um, as long as we want so anyway love and light to you all love you all good night from Texas see you next time